Here we go. Hours and hours of training and this is my chance to put it all together. I walk off after my first squat. What a disaster. I fell over twice, barely able to get the bar out of the rack. Is this meat going to be over before it even starts? I can't think like that. Can't be stressing about my hip injury right now. Did I somehow mess up something critical in these past few days? Am I not strong enough for this weight? No. This is just powerlifting. Just another thing to overcome. I have to remind myself that this isn't the end of anything. It's just the beginning. One of the things that drew me to powerlifting was the sort of objectivity. So the, the very like real markers of progress, right? If you put more weight on the bar, you're doing better. You can, you can very easily measure that. I think with something like bodybuilding or some of the other sports that I was maybe considering at the time, it was a little too subjective. There's a really good quote from a, a documentary called, uh, called Power Unlimited. And it was that uh, there's simplicity in form, but complexity in execution. So with the power lifts, like they're very, they're, they're pretty simple, straightforward movements, but the, the layers of complexity that people don't understand are there within these simple seeming movements to be able to move weights beyond, you know, what people thought was humanly possible, even within the last 10 years. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't know if I was fortunate or, or, or gifted or whatever, uh, when I kind of first got into powerlifting. But I had a lot of success, I had a lot of progress. You know, I set a lot of records, I won a lot of championships, I had some best lifter awards at big international meets. Um, and I definitely really enjoyed that sort of ride, but it, it petered out when I ran into my hip injury and you know, I was kind of set back and watched my peers progress past me. And I had to learn to change the way that I looked at powerlifting and, and to fall in love with the process more so than those achievements and those goals. And I think the only reason I'm still here, the only reason I'm still powerlifting is because I learned to shift that mindset. You know, it's, it's not so much about the end goal, the end result, the whatever at this point. It's more about just really learning to enjoy the training and, and take that for what it is. I grew up in small town Saskatchewan, a place called Moose Jaw, and then later uh, Regina, Saskatchewan. It's really flat there. Um, and it's, it's changed since I grew up there. Ironically enough, that was where I did my first powerlifting meet after moving around the country a whole bunch. I ended up back in Moose Jaw doing my first powerlifting meet. I don't know if I want to say that uh, there maybe wasn't a whole lot there for me after a certain point, but I definitely kind of needed to get out and, and figure things out for myself. That might be one of the more embarrassing things. Like, I used to play video games listening to the Macarena on my boombox. Oh, box. see, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, there, there we go. Look at me. I used to wake up early and play Mega Man listening to the Macarena on repeat. <laughs> well, see, I'm learning new Mason things. had his own dance moves, I think. He just kind of like just made up his bounced. own version. <laughs> he did the bounce. <laughs> He's an, a natural athlete. So pretty much everything he did, he did well. Um, he was finished his swimming by the time he was 12 and couldn't take his uh, bronze cross until he was 14. 
he was breaking boards in Taekwondo when he was eight or nine. Um, soccer, he started at it fairly late for soccer, but ended up on the traveling team. So he was always committed and, and had a natural grace. There's something there that his body is built for, for athletics, moves well, but it was just a matter of finding something that fit him and, and also his mind. Oh, sorry, Neil. Not as bad as mine yesterday or the other day. Oh, I forgot to record. I'm glad there were three of you guys. When I first met Bryce, like he was, he was naturally a skinny guy. And I think just seeing him go from, you know, back in the days of working at Pizza Hut and being this skinny little tatted up guy who, you know, was singing in a metal band, being very interested and passionate about lifting, which I could tell right from the start, you know, and doing his first powerlifting meet and putting up a, you know, he put up a good total and he did fine, but it was nothing out of the ordinary. It was like anyone else's first meet. And then just all of a sudden seeing his lifts increase on this just exponential rise to these numbers that I, I didn't even think were possible to lift. That's just incredible for me to see. Like, you know, to, to go from learning the technique to, to lifting that amount of weight, right? It just shows you how quickly you can progress in the sport. Well, I think that's the thing. Like, I, I wasn't necessarily super good at powerlifting when I first started. I, I started to improve really quickly, which is what fed the, I guess, the addiction. Um, but it didn't, didn't seem like anything remarkable at the time. I just really... Like there was just this sort of unnameable, unidentifiable thing about it that I enjoyed. And I, at the time, I didn't really know what it was. I just liked it. I liked doing it. I liked the training. And then I competed and something just like clicked. So I think when you, when you first start lifting, you kind of don't really know what you're capable of. I think that you don't really know what it feels like to push against the max weight because you're just not good enough at the movement, you're not efficient enough. But once you reach a certain point and you take that first real max attempt, I think if you look at the squat, for example, you can, you can use that as a pretty direct parallel for you know, some sort of uh, issue or adversity or um, you know, just hardship in life. And that moment on your way up with a heavy squat where there's that split second and the bar just stops. Everything stops dead and it's like time stops for a second. And you have this incredibly quick little discussion with yourself about whether or not you're gonna keep going, whether or not you can keep going and whether or not you're gonna be able to stand back up with this squat, with this weight on your back. And I think that the more times you can win that, the more times you can train yourself to win that discussion in your life of whether or not, when you, when you have those things hold you up and stop you dead in your tracks, and you wonder, holy crap, can I do this? Can I beat this? Can I stand up? You know, before you get stuck and you have that moment of, of uh, sort of questioning. It's like when, at this point, like when I can, when I can make it fun, when it is fun, it's like, it makes me remember why I started, why I do it in the first place. Now it's like, it's just kind of something I do sometimes. Yeah. Like it's just, it's what, it's what you do. It's what I do. Yeah. You know, you wake up, you go to the gym, you train. I mean, it's like brushing your teeth. Is it a job? In some ways, yeah. I mean, like the work is a job. Yeah. The job is a job for sure. You know, it's sure it's something I love doing, but you know, it's still work. And, and like lifting itself is, is work some days and lifting itself is something that I like Sometimes I dread it. Sometimes I don't want to do it at all. Sometimes I don't want to be at the gym. So how do you get past that? You just do it. <laughs> like just like do you it. tell yourself whatever you, you need up, to. Can't you come up with some excuses? No, and that's the thing. It's like if you can if you can beat like even one of those excuses or one of those reasons you don't want to go and just like just like take that first step, you know, like 
fill up like, your water bottle. That's, that's like whatever whatever it is to like get you going and just get your ass in and there and do it. Like you just you just do it. So that's got to be the difference between somebody that's successful and this and somebody that isn't. Okay, I can see you. Can you see me? Uh, it says it's connecting. This upcoming meet is kind of a, a bit of a litmus test, like since I took that time off to try to get healthy and it seems to be going really well. Um, I think I'm, I'm more nervous for this nationals than I have been for a nationals in a long time. Like I've been, I've been pulling really well again and there's a lot of people like, oh, 400, you're gonna load 400? Is 400 finally gonna happen? And that's kind of, you know, in my own head, I've been kind of thinking, you know, if it's there, I'll put it on the bar. And I feel like there's been, there's been a couple times where I could have probably pulled it, but I never loaded it. And I don't, I don't want this to be the last chance I get at it or something, you know? If I could, if I could bottle your attitude toward competition and just, kind of administer it to, to all of our lifters, I would definitely <laughs> do that. And like, you're so spot on with this stuff, you know? Like, it's important, it matters. You've got a good balance between, like, the short-term perspective and the long-term perspective. And um, you're focused on the things that are within your control, you know, at the same time appreciating the things that are, that are good, that are outside of your control, too. But, I mean, it's just, you're doing great, man. Thanks. That. Thanks. That that means a lot. Yeah. So the World Games is is probably the closest thing to the Olympics that powerlifting has. It's it's every four years. It's a multi-sport event. Um, they take like people who win and hit the podium at um, the IPF World Championships, and then they put a bunch of them in a competition together. So it's really the best of the best. It's the closest thing powerlifting has to an Olympics, and that's that's where I want to be. Nationals is the first meet since I took a bunch of time off, and a, not even time off, I really hesitate to call it that, but a bunch of steps back to try to fix my hip, to try to get healthy again so I can make this push. And I don't want to call it a last push, but this is probably the biggest push that I've made in my career to try to make it to the world games. So this is this is step one. And if it goes well, it means a lot. If it goes poorly, it means a lot. What am I? What am I scared of? I'm, I'm, I, and I'm terrified that that he could hurt himself. So I have to, whenever I think about that, I have to say, well, okay, I trust that he knows what he's doing. He has at a level of competition where he's taking the right steps to do the right thing to make sure what he's doing is safe. The training that he does every day in the gym with heavy weights, I just want to 
hope that every single day he's got the people he needs around him to make sure he doesn't hurt himself because that's that's my concern right so the last couple of days maybe a week or so i've been putting a fair bit of thought into the idea of going up a weight class i think that my chances of hitting the podium at worlds are better in the 120 kilo category versus the 105 kilo category where i currently am the only thing is um that's 15 kilos of body weight gained yes it gets me closer to the world games more than likely which right now is kind of the big focus the big goal the big push drive whatever you're going to call it but I still, like, I don't know what I look like or how I feel at 120 kilos. Um, it's obviously not going to happen overnight, but I still want to be able to walk the dog and go for hikes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I feel like it's probably going to be a bit of a trade-off. Um, and I haven't exactly talked to my wife about this idea yet. Any protein stuff too. So, babe, mm -hmm. I've been thinking um, and like doing some research on totals and stuff like that, and I wanted to ask you about it because obviously it matters or you're part of the decision, but. What would you think about me going up a weight class after nationals? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not thrilled about the idea, but... Yeah, I didn't think I, you would be thrilled about the idea. I get the logic behind it and why you want to do it, so... If that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. Yeah. That's why you put a ring on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Put a ring on it before I move up a weight class. <laughs> that was the plan the whole time. Perfect. It's kind of like powerlifting is our, we're like on a planet and we orbit planet powerlifting all the time. And he'll, you know, go into these stages of training where he needs to be really primed and really sharp and he needs to be eating really carefully and sleeping really well. And training is the big focus of our lives, and that's kind of leading into the few weeks of a meet. And then the meet comes, and then after that, we just kind of drift away. And powerlifting is always part of our lives, but we kind of spend less time focused in on it sometimes. I guess for most of the year, it's more of a, a background element, but it's never not present in our lives. I feel more ready for this meet than I've felt for a meet in a long time. I think the last time I felt like this was probably 2014, when I set my first world record and won best lifter at North Americans. Like I went in just kind of knowing that I was ready and able to do what I needed to do. So, uh, although I keep trying to convince myself otherwise, I think that uh, I am ready and able to do what I plan to do. I've almost, I've, I've thought about, because I, I want to pull 400 kilos, like I want to deadlift 400 kilos at this meet, and I've thought about loading like 399. I've thought about, like what if I just loaded 399 so I, like, so there's no way I can't pull it next time. You know what I mean? My mind calms and I regain my focus. I put everything I've got into moving an immovable object.
And the funny thing is, so much of this has nothing to do with lifting weights. It's about the people, and it's about the passion for a never-ending pursuit of progress. It's about falling in love with trying to be a better version of yourself. It's about commitment to that goal and perseverance through whatever gets thrown in your way. I think that everyone has their own personal 400 kilos. There's a beauty and an art in challenging your boundaries. I think it bears repeating to say, it's not just about lifting weights. 